And there it is. Dance it out. Dance, dance it out. Dance it out. Woo! Uh, well, Nez, happy Tuesday. It is a happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Although when we walked in today, uh, Toro and I walked in at the same time, and I looked at him and I said, happy Wednesday? And he goes, oh, no, no, no. To you? Tuesday. Tuesday. Uh, uh, I wish you wouldn't have done that. <laughs> I would have had the opportunity to- uh, To correct me. Not to correct you, but yes. we could have- you know, joked a little bit about it being the wrong thing. Because uh, we like to do today that. Today is Tuesday. And I do know it's Tuesday. The garbage will go out I was going to say, it's garbage day for you. <laughs> it's garbage day. And uh, I have to say, I've been uh, I've been good with the garbage. Garbage has <laughs> been going out. The guys have been great picking up the trash. It's I have been, to say, it's been good. we have had, and it only takes one week to go by without putting out the garbage. Because now all of our business deliveries, whatever we've been getting in, have been going to my house. Oh. So my recycle oh. is is a little over the top. And every, and every every time Ray goes to put it out, he goes, you know, I gotta go, I gotta, I gotta make sure I'm outside when the guys come, because you know, I want to slip them a little. <laughs> and I said, Ray, don't get yourself in trouble. They're happy to do the job. But yeah, you know, they I I think sanitation has been exceptionally good they really have uh, I, I i've never had a, a really very rarely i yeah. think i've had one complaint and in, in, in where we, the guys that we have really yeah. are, are no, great we've been pretty lucky i mean we have some can tossers every once in a while uh, well we have uh we have the um the people that come around the neighborhood and take all the cans and bottles uh, on a regular we, basis we have that too uh, we we do, we do have that. i've got some photos of them on bikes and vans and you know <laughs> taking it got to the point where i was actually separating yeah i just the leave them in. I, I do the same yeah uh, yeah just take them take whatever yeah, you want yeah this you are putting so much time and effort to going really to do that. it's a, that's a big job enjoy it please take the five cents i mean uh, it adds up but it yeah. adds up uh no and the only the the packaging, oh my God, the packaging to your point with the recycle <laughs> is a lot. Yeah. So fortunately, I've been bringing some here and then I leave some there. But I yeah. will tell you, even here, uh, my only, I, I feel like this is a Jimmy Otto rant because Jimmy does, I, although I haven't noticed, he hasn't ranted in a while, really. Uh, but my rant today is still with FedEx. I'm still having FedEx issues. Don't, don't get me started, okay? Right? Because they finally responded. I thought it was good. Work. I asked they for work. a follow up and then it was like, oh, wait, you have a problem? Yes, I have a problem. Yeah. I'm tr we're, we're working on reopening, yeah. and I need the products delivered that right. FedEx is, is currently holding. And you know, I've paid money in restocking fees, having to reorder stuff. It's a problem. So now they responded, "Oh, the tracking number that you gave us, it's already sent back. I gave that to you because you wanted one. Right. I don't care about the tracking. You know what? Here's a new one. Can you please make sure I get it? So yeah. today they did respond that that specific order will be delivered tomorrow, which is great. I we'll hope that's the case. Say. But I shouldn't have to go through this every damn well, time. I think part of the problem <laughs> with FedEx is that uh, FedEx is, the, I think their individually owned routes. I, I believe yeah. the routes are owned. FedEx? Yeah. I wouldn't know that. I believe that. Yeah. I know that with DHL when they I kind of branched in. because they're... <laughs> A couple of years ago, we had the video of a of a delivery that I got that the they kicked the box all the way down the oh. course. So when I made that when I made that Good phone point. call, yeah. they that's what they told me that they would reach out to that uh, that particular person. But huh. yeah, they, it, it's difficult, especially now when you're kind of relying on them for stuff in our business. I mean, yeah. you know, you really- No, we're trying to reopen. Like the thermometers, are, I ordered thermometers, the thermometers to come in. Yeah. So tomorrow that's, I mean, if I have to go back through that process, I mean, and the first delivery, I had ordered alcohol. We needed alcohol for cleaning and getting right. ready. I don't want to hoard products, but I need to be well, prepared. We need to be prepared. I sent the whole, they sent the whole case back. Well, guess what? When I reordered, they only had three left. So I had to get three. That's so right. I have to place another order. I had to restock, yeah. whatever. All right. Anyway, Moving the only on. rant I have on the garbage is that I love our neighbors. We try to keep this neighborhood clean. Please keep your trash out of our dumpster. It is not your personal dumpster. Um, uh, yeah, well. I can't tell you, Naz, how, in the last few days how much trash is getting thrown. Yeah. And I, then the neighbors have the audacity to complain that it smells. <laughs> Meanwhile, it's their what fish dinner that's stinking up the neighborhood <laughs> in my trash. And you know what? I'm not putting bleach in it to clean it up. Let them deal with it. Sorry. Love you all, but. Anyway, so hey, uh, I do. On. I want to share an old photo. 
uh, first before we bring on our guest. So it's our 25th anniversary. We, we, we've been sharing some old uh, Rab's photos. Uh, and this is specifically from November 11th, uh, 2008, Aww. when then Councilman Jimmy Otto yeah. uh, made it possible for us to uh, to rename uh, Delaware Avenue, uh, Rab Wilkinson Way. Uh, our very own Vicky Fischetti was, uh, wrote, <laughs> penned a letter. Uh, and I, I don't know what that process looked like, but if Vicky had to go anywhere and yell at Jim, which I doubt she did, uh, it wouldn't have been fun for Jim. Uh, and the funny part about this whole situation, because it was Veterans Day, uh, which my dad was a vet, served, they couldn't get the sign up properly. So we had Jimmy, we, Jimmy rigged it and got it up there. Yeah. Uh, and then it, a couple of days later, uh, yeah. Jimmy saw that it, it went up there. So uh, that's uh, 2008, 12 years ago. Crazy. But thank you. We've always said uh, thank you to Jimmy for making that possible. It's a permanent piece, of course, of our history. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, a nice staple in our community. All of uh, Brian's reminding me to drink some green tea too, yeah, uh, to calm yeah, down. That wasn't really. That wasn't bad. That wasn't bad. I just, it was just stupid things. It was, right. You brought up cardboard. I mean, it was all. Anyway. Uh, so, uh, Naz, we have a special guest today. He's special. <laughs> we have two guests, actually. <laughs> We have a Jim Otto, borough president, and his beard <laughs> is with him. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited about this. Oh. Uh, uh, hey, Jim, how are you? I, I tell you, you guys are funny. I might not, I might not stop watching. <laughs> <laughs> and let me just say something, Frank. My wife, the four walls of our little home, and my two pugs will attest that I have been ranting consistently. <laughs> it, might, it might not be public, but and those neighbors with the fish, fish dinner. My goodness! <laughs> yeah. you know, I, I did catch it online rant. I think he he had a little online thing last week uh, about maybe get real or get serious. But uh, yeah, nothing like we're used to seeing. Yeah. Well, I, I did have. I will admit, I'll cop to this. I did use the f word in a tweet. Uh, <laughs> three weeks ago in the direction of uh, the mayor and it was just sheer frustration and uh, it was the most appropriate term and I had to use it and uh, my wife was not happy <clears throat> if anyone tells my mother I will find you and <laughs> but uh, yeah you know at 54 you uh, you hope to have learned a few lessons and and uh, some of the, the the fire still burns deeply and brightly, but the presentation is slightly different than when we were 30 something. So you lose kind of a layer of filtering. And I find as you get a little older, the filters kind of. So is like 50 the beginning of losing the filter? I don't know. I don't know what the age is. Oh man! Well, I didn't have much of a filter to begin with. Right. Well, right. Well, that, that, yeah, and and that's yeah. why I did the Jimmy Otto rants. There was a period of time where you know, and and all rightfully so. Absolutely. And I mean, we talk, every day you were you had your little rants, and we'd laugh about it. But all true things. And one of the th mottos we say here, we like to keep it real, and so. Uh, we know you always keep it real for sure. Uh, but yeah, we kind of miss those rants, uh, the public rants. But now I'm going to go back. I didn't see that F-bomb tweet. Oh, I'm gonna go, I want to I want to check that out. <laughs> yeah, it, it actually was, was well received from the public because I think you can tell from the rest of the tweet that it was just sheer frustration. And it was during the height of, of COVID and it was on behalf of uh, Staten Island. I, I read a quote. I, I want to say it was then President Clinton. It was a former president, but the, the comment was when you show anger in public, if it's on behalf of, I think he alluded to the American people, but when it's on behalf of the public, uh, it resonates. And now listen, folks will, some folks, and I get it, don't like that language, don't ever allow a, a public figure uh, any, uh, any leeway with that language. I have a salty a vocabulary I always had, uh, in part because I went to an all boys Catholic school and every other word was a curse word. Um, but sometimes you 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 need to punctuate uh, your your rant or your tweet or your comment with uh, language that's going to break through the the morass. And certainly, a few weeks ago, when we were trying hard to convince the mayor to uh, help Staten Island on a staffing level of nurses and 
and health professionals it needed to be said. And and the, the tweet was something to the extent like, I'm just so bleep and tired about hearing about equity and fairness and all this other stuff. And when it comes to Staten Island, we're not treated fairly. And uh, and this 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 crisis since co uh, during COVID, I, I think has demonstrated that again. Yeah, uh, no, I definitely agree. We we you know you you constantly feel it's like a constant uphill battle to be knocking on the door. We're here and we need help, and uh, it's frustrating. It, it, it's frustrating. So yeah, listen, when I try hard not to give in and use the forgotten borough or give into that because right. I think we as Staten Islanders have used that Get into it like a like a pity towel and and right. it's self defeating. But when 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 the city punishes Staten Island and doesn't give us a public hospital, and then everything during this crisis is defined through the barometer of a public hospital and help is given to public hospitals, but we don't have a public hospital at your hands, then you are punishing us a second time. And it's hard not to say, hey, wait a second, Staten Island is different. You have to recognize that. And when you layer on top of that, the mayor's tendency to speak in terms of historic inequities, and we have to right these historic wrongs and fairness and the safe, the, I'm sorry, the fairest big city in America, when you layer that on top of the rest of it, it's hard not uh, to get frustrated and it's hard not to say we are being treated unfairly and dissimilarly. And uh, sometimes you need to hit it with a little F bomb <laughs> or two. Yeah, Jim, we're doing this fifth. Uh, this is our fifty-eighth episode, and I tell you, I've got a, I've got a potty mouth. Uh, everybody knows that, uh, and I will say it took me at least it was about a week before I even dropped any bombs. But it took professional, uh, professional bowler Kelly Kulik to drop the first C bomb on the show right. uh, by saying crap, and I we laughed, and well, then since then C bomb, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's why I had to say I had to specify. <laughs> she uh, she dropped it, and since then, I mean. We drop a few of them yeah, here and there. Yeah, we've loosened up a little bit. <laughs> but it took about a week to get there. <laughs> there's, a, there's a great story that that um, uh, Bart Giamatti, who was the then baseball commissioner, tells. And he was a very learned man. And there was somebody in Major League Baseball. And he was in a meeting. And Giamatti used some salty language. And after the meeting, this gentleman came up to him and said, you know, I'm not a formally educated man. You are. You know, you know I look up to you. But – I, I, I'm sort of disappointed. I'm, I'm, I'm taken aback that you would use that language. And he put his hand on this guy's shoulder very tenderly. And he said, one of the signs of a good education is knowing precisely what is the right uh, verbiage to use. And my friend, that was the right verbiage to use. It's a much more articulate story than I could tell. But it's, it's, you know, it's an interesting thing. Now, when you get in trouble, like I did uh, many years ago in my youth, with the Norwegian show that caught me on tape saying that word like 16 times. It was that whole era of that gotcha um, yeah. sort of video shows. And, and I brought uh, some embarrassment certainly to myself, to my then girlfriend, who's my, now my wife, my mother to Staten Island. Um, you have a very short leash to play fast and loose. But again, when you're fighting on behalf of the community, every now and then you got to drop one. Yeah, that's all right. And, and, and you know what? You're you're real. You're you're just telling it as it is. Hey, you're we're all frustrated at times, yeah. and it comes out. Sorry, no no uh, <laughs> no apologizing. Hey, so it's it's not no shave November, uh, and and you you've embraced the the quarantine beard. I think a bit much. So uh, what's go, what, what's going on with with, with this? Uh, I, as somebody said, Santa, he looks like Santa these days. Yeah. So I, I was actually growing something uh, prior to then. And the first six weeks of uh, the COVID response, it really was uh, one big blur. And, and, and frankly, there was very little time to do it. Uh, I wrote a piece up, I put it up on Facebook uh, about the, an ode to the playoff beard. When I was a kid in the well, – kid – when I was a teenager in the 80s, I was a really big hockey fan, and I was struck by the fact that professional hockey players, and it turns out when I did my research for this piece that I wrote, 
um, which was a piece I wrote for my own edification. Turns out it was my own New York Islanders who did it. And when I noticed it back then, it really was the beginning of this superstition or this trend and it's now a tradition. During the playoffs, when everything was on the line, the Islanders stopped shaving. And the, and the point was like they had a, a, a sole focus. They were so focused on winning the Stanley Cup that they didn't care about how they looked. They didn't care about anything. They cared about winning and they stopped shaving. And it just, it seemed appropriate that during this crisis and, and you do these things and I know I do, I don't know if people at home do it, but I, I I'm big on motivation. I'm big on self-motivation. And I, I believe in little tricks, little hacks, little things to get myself in the right mindset. And it just struck me that this was crunch time and that a playoff beard made a lot of sense. And since then, um, you know, the more people make negative comments, I, I'm like the uh, the soup Nazi in Seinfeld. It's like, instead of no soup for you, it's like, two more weeks. You know, like, two more weeks. So my wife is, uh, she is an intelligent, beautiful, no you. Woman, and she puts up with it. And um, in her own way, she says two more weeks. And that's it. But, um, yeah, so it's, it was just, a, it was just a thing that turned into it was just a beard that turned into sort of playoff beard and it took on a life of its own. And, and when we open up officially, when, when, um, when I think the time is right, again, to sort of em embrace a different mindset, the beard will come off. And you're going to video that for all to see. Right? Yeah, I'm sure. You know, I, I, I will do it. Listen, I will threaten to keep it on if people hate it that much. I will do it <laughs> charity to raise money for my good friend, Vinny Nizio and Catholic charities of, or, or the JCC, I, I, you know, I'm, don't put it past me to raise some money for a good call. Teddy Alice, the Alice Foundation, I will shave it. Uh, or I will keep it on unless you pay them for me to shave. <laughs> I, sound, I mean, that sounds like, that sounds like a, a good yeah, time. That sounds, yeah. yeah, that's perfect timing. <laughs> I'm afraid of, the only problem with that is I'm afraid my wife will be the highest bidder. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you, you know, you mentioned about uh, little hacks or motivation – and I, I wanted to know from you, uh, this is a particular significant time in history. And uh, what does it take to uh, to lead during a time like this? Because it's, it's very sensitive. And I think more than ever, people are looking to our leaders to really guide us and, and you know, for what they can bring. So how do you lead it a time like this? That's a, that is a great question. And I, I have to tell you, that is one of the best questions I think I've gotten in, in 20 years because, and I'm sensitive to, sensitive to a question like that now at 54. And uh, I tell people that I went through a, a midlife crisis when I turned 50. I didn't like that number. I didn't like 40. I didn't like 30. 50 really um, hit me in a, in a, in a difficult way. It's so much that, um, you know, you, you, you realize that, uh, and I've kind of had, I don't want to say morbid, but I have a keen sense of, of my own mortality. And when you hit 50, it's a certain number that makes you pause and think. And I realize like there's a certain amount of sand underneath the hourglass and a certain amount above. And I, and I, my, my, my midlife crisis at 50 was, I want to be better. And this is the one go around. This is, you know, and a lot of it's gone. I want to be better in everything I do. I want to be better. I want to be a better husband. I want to be a better uh, son. I want to be a better friend. I want to be a better elected official. And for me, that was rediscovering my love for reading. So um, that has led me in the last four years down some really wonderful paths. And, and I think to answer your question directly, you better have had a good system and a good process ahead of time. And I feel very fortunate that during a time where there's an even more stress uh, on you that I, I had this, this system of habits and this, this process that worked for me. Um, in the last year, that's in, that's, I've added to that a, a meditation practice. And a year and five months ago, if someone would have said that to me, I would have rolled my eyes and would have thought it was kind of like woo-woo, hippie, dippy. Right. Stuff. And, and all it is is like taking some time during the day to sit in, uh, and be quiet and just sort of relax and be still. And I heard this podcast 
of this woman who had a company and she wrote a book and I bought the book and she made it so digestible and so easy that I've incorporated that. And I put that on top of my physical, um, you know, process. Uh, I, so prior to COVID, uh, I made a point of getting up early before five, um, doing my, you know, um, letting the dogs out, bringing them in, going downstairs, doing my, my meditation, uh, getting a cup of coffee, looking at my emails and my texts and see what crisis happened when I was sleeping, um, answer a few that I needed to answer, do a real quick rundown of, of uh, the, the, the um, news of the day, then head to the gym, get that physical training in. And then for me, I, I believe in the science that the two hours after that are your most productive hours of the day. And I changed my schedule to make sure – I was really productive. The, the analysis, the planning, the writing, the thinking happened in those two hours and then go into the meetings and, and let the day pull you in a, a million directions. Um, and during the crisis, to answer, again, to answer your question seven hours later, during the crisis, it's fall back on those processes, fall back on the things that have allowed you to deal with stress before. And, you know, there's a, I'm not a um, – I'm not a Yankee fan. I'm a Met fan, but I think the Yankees are, uh, are, I think more associated or at least one Yankee with that, that phrase pressure is a privilege. Um, in 590 days, I won't be the borough president anymore. My, my career as an elected official will be over. And, and as difficult as these days are, you will look back and say, yeah, damn, they went fast and damn, you were in a position to help. And that was what a blessing. And so embrace each day, embrace the madness, yell, scream here in your basement and your, your, your headquarters, curse, um, you know, pump out some push-ups, um, have really good friends to vent to, have a loving wife, play music loud, um, you know, go run around outside for five minutes with the, the, the dogs, then come back and get, and get back after it. So, um, yeah, have a process in place and work on it. Um, now so that when the blank really does hit the fan, you at the very least have that structure that you can fall back on. Right. So oh, I talked a lot right there. Oh, no, that was good. That was great. <laughs> Shut uh, up. So, uh, so you feel like having that clarity yourself uh, help you be able to lead in a, in a more efficient way. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, like many Americans, have been watching, even though I'm a New York Knicks fan and Michael Jordan broke my heart. I've watched this 10 part series on, series right. on ESPN. And it's it's because I'm a, a sports fan. But but more importantly, later in life, I've become a real fan. I do a lot of reading on human nature. And, and I thought without giving any secrets away, I don't want to spoil. I thought the most most important takeaway for me was that someone in the last episode said that beyond the physical prowess, beyond the work that he put in, beyond Michael Jordan's best asset was that he had the ability to be in the present and the ability to be in the here and now and maximize that moment. And that has always been a struggle for me. Everything has been about the next step, to work hard in St. Arthes to get into Farrell, to work hard in Farrell to get into a good college, you work hard in college to get into law school, you work hard to get a job, to pass the bar, blah, 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 blah. And everything in this job is about worrying about what's coming next, worrying about who's trying to stab me in the back, worrying and anticipating the next problem, the next hit from the media, the next, and it's hard to be in the here and now. And, I, and, I, and later in life, I found that that is so important and everything becomes richer when you work on controlling, you know, your attention span. And, the, and to hear that, that was one of, that was Jordan's greatest strength. It was confirming for me that how important it is. And I think I am at 54, even though there's a lot of tread off the tire for me professionally, and I, I, I'm candid in saying I'm tired. Um, and I think Michael Jordan was physically tired. I think you may, can more than make up for that by being even sharper mentally. And I think at 54, I am much sharper than I was at 35. Yeah. And I think they said the same thing about Kobe too, that Kobe Bryant, that yeah. he had that 
no matter what was going on, he was present and he knew he had a clear cut vision of what was important to him. And he always, he always went forward from that place. So yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, the other thing is I, 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 I collect words and I click bits and I put them away and I know someday they're going to be appropriate and they're going to help me be more articulate than I am. I use other people's words and, um, and, and I, I have this thing that I'm going to write called the power of no. And, and, and I follow these, these really smart people who talk about controlling your schedule. Back when I was in the council, I thought I was being most effective packing every minute of my day with meetings. And I learned a few years ago at Borough Hall that I'm not doing that and that um, I'm going to control my schedule and, and leave space and time between meetings to think about the meeting that I just had, to think about what we're really going to do, to give it enough time to bring the staff back in, to do a postmortem on that meeting, and then to contemplate the upcoming meeting. Or the, and I just think being in the here and now and allowing you the space and then, you know, giving yourself some time just to like, you know, that's what meditation is, just to sort of decompress um, I think it leads you to be a more effective whatever. And for me, I think um, we've done some of our best work in the last few years as a team because we preach that and we, we encourage that up and down the, the, the team at Borough Hall. Great. Yeah, and you, it's, it's funny you talk about that. And you've been doing this for quite some time. And, and it, you know, you're not counting days, I, 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 I gathered. Yeah. From, from <laughs> <laughs> you have a big oh. count the wall where you rip the numbers off? I have, a, I have an app. I'm not I have an app on my phone that's a countdown clock. And in part, again, because, I mean, it's cute. It's funny. It gets a laugh um, in part because there are days where I want to be like at the end of a Bugs Bunny film and run through the backdrop, you know, the Looney Tunes. <laughs> but it's also a reminder that, you know, what is it like the, the old saying, the days are long but the weeks are short or the days are long and the years are short. This is all going to be over soon. And, you know, and I've learned that lesson walking out of, of City Hall. As the minority leader, I had uh, a key to my office inside City Hall. And at any point, uh, day or night, and back in the day, and I won't say why, but back in the day, I took advantage of it. And I would go into City Hall. If I wanted to be a braggadocio, I would show somebody, hey, look, and we you could go into City Hall at 12 o'clock at night. And I had that ability the cop would recognize me, oh, Councilman Otto, and you could walk in. And I was, what, one of a handful of people who had the ability to work in that building. And if I wanted to just take a look around the council chambers at, at 12 o'clock at night, I could. And then one day, December 31st, of 2013, you hand in the key. And even though you did that for 12 years, you couldn't do that anymore. So I'm very, I'm very cognizant of the fact that one day you hand the key back and that's not your desk. That's not your office. You don't do that. You can't be in a position to, to walk outside your house and see something and have the title and the platform to address it. So I keep that, that reminder in my head. And I promise you that when it is time, I will get off the stage and like, folks that we've seen on all levels of government who can't let go, I will let go and let my successor do his thing or her thing. But until yeah. then, I want to remind her how much time I have left. So I get after it every day and I, and I leave it all on the, the court. Yeah. It's, it's easy to say that you won't be, you won't, you, you, you won't be in the, in the position any longer, but you know, somebody like you uh, who was a natural for this position, I uh, yeah. certainly will be looked at as a mentor for, for many of your colleagues. So that phone will always be ringing, uh, texts, emails, calls, a day and night. Uh, just the, the best part is that you get to decide whether or not you answer. <laughs> that, that's, a, that, that's a wonderful thing. Thank you for that, because I'm, I'm a big believer in mentors. And, and yeah, that I would welcome. That I think is great. And, and, like, and like you say, I, you can look down and say, hmm, interesting. Yeah, I'll let that one go to voicemail. <laughs> um, Not like, yeah, that's cool. That's a, that's a wonderful thing to hang on to as well. Yeah, and speaking of mentors, so you're going to be that, and, and, and this is hard to accept that, especially for somebody like you, uh, and and we feel the same way. Uh, but who was your mentor? Who who really helped you uh, get to this point? And then at the same time, two two part here. 
you have to decide to be able to call it quits. And it seems like, hey, and you've been very vocal, I'm done after this. Is that true? What does retirement look like? But who was your mentor and how did you get to, the, to make that decision? I've been really blessed to have a few special people like that. And I've, and later in life, I've, I've well, actually, I shouldn't say later in life. I think I've always been open to, to and welcome the, the chance to be in the circle of, of intelligent people or good people and learn from them. And then particularly later in life, I think I'm, I'm welcoming that, that role of being sort of the modern elder as, as uh, author Chip Conley calls them. Uh, without a doubt, I wouldn't be talking to you right now. I would never have gotten elected. I wouldn't be borough president, but for John Fusco, uh, he is the reason why my life went down the path it did. He was the councilman in 1992 who gave me a job when, um, you know, I, I graduated law school, I passed the bar exam. I did everything everyone told me I was supposed to do and I couldn't find a job. And then thanks to my mom meeting then councilman Fusco at a Christmas uh, holiday party for the Old Town Civic Association. And a few months later, John Fusco reached out and I got to learn at his knee. And, and, and listen, anyone who knows anything about John Fusco, you know, he's an amazing man. And he taught me what it's like to do this job the right way, what it's like to be a Staten Island elected official, how you have to be a little bit different and do things differently. And, and he, by far, next to my mom and my dad, um, had the biggest impact on my life. And then there was a guy uh, who's no longer with us who was a councilman. John Fusco it allowed me to meet him, a councilman uh, by the name of Tom Ogdemeny from Queens. He was the minority leader. He... Um, I worked for him. That was a job John Fusco got for me. So I still kind of work for John, but I work for Tom. And that's my first job inside City Hall in 1994, at the end of 1994. And Tom just opened up a whole new world. And he taught me sort of the rough and tumble side of politics. He was brilliant. He was insane. He was just so much fun as, an, as a boss. And, um, you know, when you see me throw a sharp elbow in politics, it's probably – the technique that, that Tom taught me. And uh, they were just really amazing men. And then the last person I would want to mention, because um, she had such an influence on my life, was a, a woman by the name of Helen Cashin. She was a nun at St. Dorothy's. She helped hone uh, my love for words and English. And lo and behold, I find a career where stringing together words both in the written form and the verbal form um, is a really important part of it and she was this most amazing nun at St. Dorothy. She was so caring and she took a special fondness for me and she she uh, she was a, a, a everything she taught me I use on a weekly basis so he's looking down smiling except for when I use the f word. <laughs> Uh, so she, she, I'm sure she beat you up in that time too, right? Oh. <laughs> she, she was not one of the, I'll tell you a great story. She was the acting principal because the principal who was a, a, a nun that we just lost re recently, she's the Margaret, Mary Margaret, Margaret Mary Sousa, who, who could, who could turn you to stone just by looking at you. She happened, she probably was in her early thirties at the time when I was a kid, but back then they looked, but sister Sousa, was on assignments. So Sister Cashin was the acting principal, and I was in the eighth grade. I got kicked out of class by a lay teacher, and I, I got sent to the principal's office. And it, if it were Sister Susan there, I was dead meat. Um, but who was there? It's Sister Helen Cashin, and she loved me. And instead of taking out a ruler and threatening corporal punishment, she sat me down and she's like, oh, oh, James, I can see with you the lessons will be hard to learn. <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, so she, uh, she taught me, I remember we were in the seventh grade in St. Dorothy's with the diary, the sentence diary, breaking up a sentence on par with what you would learn in English comp 101 in college. And she had us uh, doing that as, as seventh graders. And it was a fabulous part and a fabulous foundation of your education. And then and that obviously shaped to get you where you are today. And then uh, how, do, how does that shape you to, to, to really say, hey, I'm done here. I've done my time. Because I think that's the, that's the easiest decision to make. But that's at the same hard. time, it's the hardest because you know you have so much more to give. Uh, but you, you've done your time. So yeah, you I've done my time in terms of I, I, don't, I don't ever 
want to, I don't want to run for elective office. I don't want to be an elected official anymore. I, I, we, I, you know, I want to go out sort of like, again, to use the Jordan analogy, I want to go out knowing that I could have still done the job at a really high level, but I want to go out on my own terms. I don't, I don't want to go out being stale. This job, if you do it the way John Fusco taught you, um, it, it takes a toll on you. Um, I, I have damaged at my own doing. I've damaged uh, friendships. I've damaged um, relationships with family. I've damaged relationships. Um, I put my wife second. I put my mom second. I put my physical health, my mental health second to the job for a long time. Uh, and again, that was my choice. I don't want to do that anymore. Um, and I, I'm tired of the vitriol and the stupidity, frankly, that social media brings. It's such a wonderful tool when it is used the right way and I can't let it go because it, it, the good people out there get great information from us and access to us and it's a good thing. But I'm tired of inviting knuckleheads in, literally into my house and telling me in an uninformed way how I'm dumb and, 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 and I'm just fatigued by all of that. I hate the partisanship. I, I, it's just It just blows my mind how... Uh, people are in camps and are unwilling to even listen. Um, so I'm, 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 I'm looking forward to being done with all that. I love city government. I don't want to, um, I, I, if, if there's a role for me to be on the inside, to be more effective, I would welcome having a conversation. Um, it's a little unnerving to, to know you're going to be unemployed and uh, not knowing where you will be at age 55. Um, but when I turned down the chance to run for that awfully cushy 14-year judgeship, uh, you have to embrace the uncertainty. And so I'm trying to think about it that I'm on the brink of everything, to use a title of a great book or chapter in a book. I'm on the brink of everything. I, I, I like to think that my life could go in a lot of different ways at age 55. We'll see where it goes. And uh, our, friend, our old friend Lou Tobacco, former assemblyman, um, who's now the president of Monsignor Farrell, gave me a really wonderful gift and allowed me to teach, um, before we were interrupted by the virus, once a week, this leadership class at Monsignor Farrell to go back home. And I absolutely loved it. And I'd like to incorporate that uh, some way in life after uh, Borough Hall, um, which ties into your, your comment about mentorship. So we'll see, we'll see where it goes. But in terms of running for office, Peace out. <laughs> so, you know, we would love to say, hey, Jim for mayor, but, uh, you know, obviously. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> and oh, is no. there, so maybe there's a book you, you should be writing. You could pen many books here uh, and you have a way with words. And you, you talk about social media. You've used that to your advantage many in, in many different ways. And I want to come back to that because I think it, it's prevalent to the message you've been sending. But a book, I mean, you got to at least write one. You could write one, at least one book. I wish I had taken really good notes or kept a journal, which by the way, I would advocate. I did it my second semester of senior, senior year at Fordham, 1988. And I go back every five or so years to read it. And it's amazing. And I, I wish I would have journaled during this experience because I've forgotten, <laughs> I've forgotten most of it. Um, that's why Marie Carmen LaFrancesco has been with us going back to the Fusco yeah. It just amazes me. She's such a wonderful Wonderful partner, all of this, but she's got this steel trap. She finishes my thoughts, remembers names, dates, events. I'm like, how do you remember this? I don't. Um, but yeah, it, social media is such a wonderful thing when it works. And I, I credit um, former Councilman Ignizio for uh, he and I, when we were in the council way back when, I think we're really two of the first people, elected officials on Staten Island, to embrace it early and use it. Vinny was famous because he's, he's um, what do you call it when you can't sleep at night? It's, it's insomnia. insomnia. Yeah, he's got insomnia. So he would stay up all night when we were in a blackout or a snowstorm. And I famously have a Jeep. So I, you know, used to act like I was in an M1 tank and I'd go out there and give like a live account. And, and so we, 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 and then when Sandy hit, we really, um, I think it was the peak effectiveness of social media. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it was just amazing. I mean, we 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 literally were getting people saying, uh, in 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 Midland Beach on this block, there are senior citizens on the second floor, and water's coming up. You got to get. 
And we would call Speaker Christine Quinn's staff person or email them on their private email because the system was down and they were embedded in OEM and that's how we would get help. And it was the peak of it. And I think it's just, it's just steadily gone down and turned into the cesspool of yes. arguing and hate and vitriol. And I'm tired of it. Uh, you know, that's the exact word I would have used is vitriol is that there's no, there's no tolerance. And we talk about this all the time on here, not to get deep into politics, but there's, there seems to be no tolerance for uh, an opinion that doesn't match yours for a lot of people. So if I don't agree with your politics or what you think, then you're an idiot. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. no, there's, there's no give and take. There's no, uh, everything, you know, everything is so divisive and split that it, it's hard to be, uh, you know, a, a, a thinking person in the, I hate to be that way, in social media. Yeah. It, it, it is, it's difficult. Yeah, I mean, people, some people just want to be out, outraged. They live off it, they feed off it. It's 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 um, addictive. And so no matter what you say, they're going to say they're outraged. And, uh, you, know, you know, to kind of put these conversations, these threads of these conversations together. So, um, in this hyper opinionated age, I gravitate more and more to sort of science and I was never really enjoyed science, but in later, later in life, I've kind of been fascinated by it and fascinated by the brain. And so, uh, I, I, I'm fascinated about the science of listening and I've read a couple of really, really fun books and entertaining books about, about listening. And, uh, it, you know, somebody said it's a superpower, and I and I and I encourage young people, and, and I actually made it part of the curriculum at the class at Farrell. We spent the whole class on listening, and and no one, no one, we're not good at listening. Biologically, we're not wired to listen to it because our brain can process more words than with other people speak. So we kind of get distracted as I'm talking. You know, I'm not talking out of 150 words per minute. Our brain can do uh, like 600. And so we're, we're biologically not wired to listen. And now you add this era where, but I think teaching listening to our students and the science of listening and, the, and sort of how it's related to different parts of the brain. Uh, and so later in life, although probably not evidenced by me talking on and on in this interview, <laughs> I try hard to listen and like be in that moment. And again, it's tied into the whole mindfulness and the, and I always thought that as you were speaking, I was preparing my next question, my next comment. And I thought, oh, that's great. That's me. I'm a, I'm a preparation guy. This is good. But I'm supposed to be listening to your question and, and being confident enough to know that I can answer based on your and, – and folks don't want to listen today. And, and I get tired, frankly, of, of trying to explain. And I realize, like, this is actually making it worse. So – the good ones here, and there's a good dialogue with social media. It's so beautiful at times. But the <laughs> bad ones, you know, like, and I go, mute, block. <laughs> sue me, sue me and say that uh, President Trump was sued, and they say uh, I have a constitutional right to be on your – sue me, and I will delete the whole thing. I, there is no constitutional right for you to be a jerk <laughs> on my own page. No, I don't have so bleep. Bleep, bleep, gone. That's how I live life these days because you can't get all of this intimate contact and me being at 11 o'clock answering. It, I can't do that and have to, and, and deal with the guy who just is – he doesn't – he's just being a jerk intentionally. You're thrown out. Get the bleep off my page. And that's the way I act the last few years. And that's the downside. The plus side is – if you want to have a conversation, you want to have a discussion, you disagree with me on a, on a uh, on an issue, I will engage you for as long as possible. And by the way, if you really want to do that, you would be sending me an email. You wouldn't be making a, a wise ass comment on a thread that I may or may not see. And um, so it's the best of the best of times and the worst of times. Yeah. yeah, and you've been very consistent in in in, in public and in, in, in saying that. Hey, I'll challenge. Come on, let's have the conversation because it only helps us, right? Uh, one, he keeps it real. Two, it only helps us get further yes. if let's have the conversation. Because if there's discussion. something legitimate that's going to help and better our community, then hey, let's let's make it happen. But all that extra noise gets you nowhere, and all the extra noise just gets you hidden. 
Uh, and it's a shame because sometimes there's something valuable within what they're saying. Hey, this isn't the first time we're in such a situation that in, in your uh, time in office. So, and you, you have, a, you've been sh very vocal about your message about, you know, in the beginning, telling people to stay home, uh, we're on the right path, flatten the curve. So today, you know, we're 50, we're 64 days in, 63 days into the, uh, into the shut uh, lockdown. Uh, and what is your message today to uh, Staten Islanders? I think my message is I understand the frustration. I understand the uh, the the anger and just the, the desperation, frankly, in some circles. I, you know, listen, I'm blessed. I get a paycheck every two weeks, and that paycheck is coming regardless of anything else. And I'm, I try to be real cognizant of that and 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 put that bias, if you will, aside and say, you know, the small business owner is not. The small business owner is desperate. And while I'm coming at it from a perspective of maybe with a, the needle pointed a little bit more to uh, health and wellness and safety and public safety, respect and understand that th this guy is why, or this gal is, is watching his or her lifetime's worth of work go down the tubes and they're, and they're desperate to open, not because they don't give a damn about people. And I, and I separate that out from some of the nonsense I've seen and you've seen on TV about, you know, I'm not wearing a mask to, to, you know, to make a point and I'm a patriot for not wearing a mask. So my, I, I think my message is first and foremost is to those, um, those business owners and those fo folks who are out of work, who are desperate to have the city and state reopened. I, I hear you. I get it. I want to reopen too. Um, and uh, I'm, I watch these metrics that the governor, I'm staring at it right now, actually, on, on my uh, screen. Um, the seven metrics that the governor uh, has put in place to determine when New York City uh, opens up. And I was happy to see today on one of the metrics, the new hospitalizations. We got to get it under two per 100,000 residents for the first time. We ha we're at 1.80, uh, so we're underneath it. And we're four out of seven. I think by all indications, we're going to have all of these metrics met in early June. You will see the phased reopening, I think, of New York City in early June. It won't be all businesses. It will be construction. It will be manufacturing. And we'll slowly figure out a plan. Um, uh, so, I, I mean, I'm trying. Listen, I, I think it can't be arbitrary. It's got to be evidence-based. you got to communicate to the public what these metrics are, why you pick them, where we are. Uh, will that satisfy everyone? Are, are there – is there some degree of arbitrary, you know, is it arbitrary to some degree 30% of ICU beds instead of 27 or 28 where we're at? Yeah, I guess so. Um, I just think the worst case scenario of all, both from a health perspective, public safety perspective, and from an economic perspective long term is for us to start and then have to slam the brakes on with another pause because then I think you're going to do lasting damage. And then you just wipe, you've wiped out just about all businesses. Um, so I want to open up, man. I, I want to open up, but uh, I want to do it based on a, 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 some sort of rational basis. And I think the governor, to a large degree, has, has tried to do that. I know a lot of people don't agree with that, uh, but from where I sit, I, I think he's, for the most part, hit that hit that mark on those standards. Yeah, and you know it's hard for us. We've you know we've been identified in phase four, and so of course we've always believed that we'd be the last to open. And, and I get it. I, I, I'd be I, I want to be on the rooftop yelling and screaming, "Open me up!" But we we get it. We understand yeah. it. I, I don't want to, and I don't want to fight it. We need to do it right. And, and to your point, the only concern I have at this point, uh, things are changing over the bridge in New Jersey rather quickly. So. Governor Murphy is just, may decide to start opening up, allowing restaurants to open in the next week or so, uh, and a little bit faster paced than we are. And for Staten Islanders, it's very easy yeah. to go right over those bridges yeah. to go enjoy that. And so, what what does what do we what does that become to look like? Right. Uh, for, not even just for them, but even for us going back and forth, uh, and then the businesses here looking. Oh, now I'm losing business because they right. can go over the bridge. Right. I mean. They're not going to be able to get serve at everybody, but I think that's a challenge, and I think that's real. 
Yeah, it, it's uh, it's kind of some of the governor's own language coming back. I don't want to say biting him, but you know he talked about a regional approach and just right. for the, to avoid this dynamic. And that well, I don't, again, I don't want to say the, that that alliance is is broken, but you are seeing states get ahead of each other. Listen, within the state, now we're seeing folks right. in Long Island, elected officials in Long Island saying, Long Island beaches are only going to be for Nassau County. Nassau County beaches are only going to be for Nassau residents. I don't know, I'm going to check license, license uh, driver's license or something, I don't know. But now you're going to pit New Yorker versus New Yorker, not even uh, interstate, it's going to be interstate. Um, does that play subconsciously into the decision-making process and and the governor loosen that valve to use his language, maybe even a little sooner than what he anticipated. Subconsciously, I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't argue. I think it does. Um, and, and to your point, in fairness, it's not going to be a full, full fledged restaurant where they're going to have table on top of table. They're going to piecemeal it back together. But the bigger point, yeah, um, we, we have seen that historically on Staten Island and we fought it historically when the sales tax was an issue and it was like a magnet to New Jersey and we were losing businesses to, to New Jersey because of the sales tax. Um, and so we always have to be cognizant of the fact that we're a, kind of a border community that can easily go cross border into another jurisdiction. Uh, I think uh, we have to, we have to thread a very fine needle and um, it's not easy and folks will be upset. And I, I, and, I, and I recognize that at, we're at the point now where days and weeks could be the difference between liability or not. And I think every day counts. Um, and I just, I just uh, hope uh, and pray that these metrics go in the right order uh, quickly and that um, we begin to roll out the specific rules for the, each phase. And hopefully that goes smoothly. Um, and we don't see a resurgence, uh, or at least the resurgence on uh, to the degree that requires us to then start peeling back, because uh, that's a scary, scary scenario. Yeah, and I think and the, our the two Northwell uh, hospitals celebrated zero, right? Yeah, zero, zero, uh, uh, it's zero admissions yesterday. Admission. So, no and, I, and that's a that's a great start too. So, yeah. uh, hey, who's that guy? Yeah, Jimmy, how are you? I wanted man? to say hello. Good to see you, brother. How are you? I'm doing good. Good. I want this, though. I, I'm losing this, so I got this. I'm going to get one of these with you, all right? I think it was uh, Aristotle or Bob Dylan, or I'm making this up, but someone said, if you can't grow it on your head, grow it on your chin. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Ray, could you? You don't get that much uh, on your. Oh, if he does, if, if you grow, grow it out, let it you let it go. Yeah, all right. It go. I, it's funny because I started to like let it go, and I was like, you know what? No, no, right. I'm just gonna keep the where, shadow. Where you, where you don't want about it, it grows. Where you want it, yeah. <laughs> that's the truth. I, I'm gonna do. You know, I, I was a kid. I was into professional wrestling, and I and um, you know, when when Hulk Hogan became like a bad guy, yeah. he he turned his beard black, like he put the. So <laughs> I might I might just do it before I shave it. Dye it all black. Tell one nasty constituent off, <laughs> and then shave. I, I think I'm gonna videotape that. That could be good social. Media. Please let me videotape it for you. Let me yeah. do it for you, all right? And it's so hard not to itch and scratch, right? Yeah. I, I, I get well, it. Not, no, I think that, that you know you're not supposed to touch your face, and I was one of these guys who always touched his face. Now it's very difficult. I was watching. Um, I was watching Ozark. I'm one. Of, I'm late to Ozark, so I'm watching the first season of Ozark. Saturday night with my wife, Love and it. I'm just like stroking the beard, and I can see it in my peripheral vision. She was mocking me, and I turned to her, and I'm like, and she's like, so it's a bit, it's it's not itchy anymore. In the beginning, it is. Now it's more of a you know contemplative stroking it, which is not good because you're not supposed to touch your face. But now, but I think I can because I I. I washed my hands prior to COVID, no exaggeration, like eight times a day. Now I'm probably up to 12. So <laughs> we're the same way. It's yeah. funny, my hands get so dried out because I wash my hands constantly. Hey, I, before we let you go, I do. Uh, uh, I want. I have a couple, just a couple questions. So uh, you say you have 500 plus days in your in your term, uh, and you have accomplished. You set out going into this job. You had a list of priorities, and I mean you some of the toughest things to accomplish that most people look at you like you were crazy and i and you and you've said that and so here we are today 
all, th all this time in and you've achieved a lot of it. But one, what does the next 500 something days look like? And what would you think that was your, your, uh, what is your biggest achievement in your eyes that you feel as borough president you've helped achieve? So I'm not sure if I could do this correctly, but it's yep. 590 days, <laughs> nine hours, <laughs> one minute, 51 seconds. That's the answer to your first question. Interestingly enough, right next to me is a list uh, of sort of a working draft of the agenda. And uh, I have the best chief of staff in the business. His name is Jason Rusevsky. He worked for Jim Molinaro in a, in a middle position, and I got to know him in the campaign. And he's a leader, and I and we we elevated him. And he's just he's a the great leader of a great team we have at Burr Hall. And um, at one point during this, uh, I said to him, like we go to the whiteboard, which is our agenda, and wipe it clean because there's going to be no money. There's going to we're never going to get to most of this. We have retooled our agenda. And some of it that existed prior to COVID, we think we could still do. Some of it, uh, a lot of it, we won't be able to. Um, we're going to try to offer it to those running for borough president because I, I still believe in the importance of it. But we, we, we think we have a really good vision of, of what's truly, truly important and what we should do. Um, and to answer your last part of the question, it's, it's, it's clearer than anything to me. I think the thing I am proudest of the most and during Sandy, when I thought that was the most difficult part of my career, the recovery of Sandy, uh, which was harder in many ways than the storm, I used to drive past on Tarji Street the construction of the new PS48. And, and I mean this. I'm not making this up. I used to drive there to remind myself why I was in this business, why I was putting up with this, and what you can do with it. And that was the old doctor's hospital. The city never did not want to sell that property. And I, I at the risk of being self-serving, I truly believe, and I know in my heart of heart, but for us in the city, you know, my council office, um, they would have never sold the property. We would have never been able to build a school there. And we certainly would have never made the school K to eight. And I think that new 48, uh, I will be long on. No one will remember me. That school will be up educating kids. It's a fantastic place. And I think by far that will be the thing that I'm proudest of because it has an ongoing impact that will change the, 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 the direction of kids' lives yep. for years and years and years. Yeah. I, and and, and, and the, the, the guys said it too, that, that, that it's a beautiful school. Uh, <laughs> I think the only issue is uh, getting the, the traffic at the end of the day but yeah, I will well, say it's it, it's, I, they've done, it's everywhere, but it is yeah. great. And, and kudos to you and your team because yeah. that really is, uh, uh, you you drive by and you see that and it, it certainly shows again. hope uh, for the education system. So kudos, kudos to you. Uh, hey, Jim, uh, before we let you go, is there anything that you certainly want to, you want to share with, uh, with those that are watching and, and your constituents? Yeah, I'd like to, i like to end with a, a expressing a, some gratitude. Uh, and that is to, to, to two different well, let, let me obviously to all of the healthcare workers, um, thank you so much. Uh, just truly amazing what you've done. And um, my mom had a, um, a little incident, well, more than a little incident, a couple of weeks ago. So in the middle of this, we had to do the 911 call. And some of our, you know, two of our great EMS workers had to come and, and take my mom to SIUH. This is EMS week. So thank you to all of the, EMS work is the first responders. Echo. So, so appreciative of what they've done pre-COVID. The, the other group I want to thank is, um, I mentioned Jason Ruszewski. I want to thank Dr. Ginny Montello and my staff and my entire Borough Hall team. I, I, I will miss working with them in 590 days. We have crafted a wonderful team. They are such wonderful professionals. They get it. They care. They're still crushing it, even though we're not working at Borough Hall. I love them. Uh, and lastly, I, I think I, I want to throw a bouquet to my colleagues on Staten Island and elective office. Um, I don't hide from the fact that going into this saga, there are a couple of them that I don't particularly, uh, <laughs> I don't particularly care for, and I don't think they particularly care for me. Um, <laughs> some I'm, I'm, I'm really close to. But uh, to an individual, uh, I watched uh, as we put together a, 
a, a text thread that we communicated with multiple times daily. I put together a conference call with all of them on it. And a couple of them are running against each other for Congress. A few of them may run against each other next year for borough president. And man, in those first, um, first six weeks, we talked just about every day. And they really put their egos aside and for the most part did what was in the best interest of Staten Island. I know that's our job. I know that's what we're supposed to do. I know that's what the public expects. The reality is it doesn't happen. For those six weeks, I think they really did it. And I, I thank them for the cooperation and the collaboration. Awesome. Uh, Jim, really, thank you so much. Thank and, you. and uh, you know, through your time, you've certainly left your mark and you continue to leave your mark. Uh, and, and you know what, all that you've accomplished, you, you talk about it, but, uh, and there are things that you don't talk about that you've accomplished, which, which is something that you know is there. And this community really appreciates uh, all that you have done uh, for us. So thank you very much. And really thank you. Thank you. This was wonderful. This is, this is truly, and I don't mean this, this was really one of the most enjoyable interviews I think I've, I've ever done. And the questions were wonderful. Thank you. I mean, go to places that you don't typically go in an, an interview. And I, and I hope folks are watching it and maybe they'll go, hmm, let me try, uh, let me go listen to a, a, a meditation app or whatever. I think, uh, or let me go read a book on listening. I think there's a real wonderful benefit to that. Thank you. Well done. Yeah. yeah thank you. And yeah. there's a suggestion. Oh, once uh, Ray's got something. One second. Yeah, when it comes to politics, when you being elected, that's like winning the lottery. Uh, really, yeah. it's like winning I'm the lottery. not sure everyone agrees to, to that, but I, I thank, you. <laughs> uh, thank you for that. You make up for a lot of the, the folks who uh, I think yeah. unfairly don't appreciate the opinion. Come and tell them to come and, and talk to me. I'll <laughs> and, and our good friend, Naz, you see this one? Our good friend Joe Laverde has a great suggestion for you yes, in retirement. Listen. Uh, you're an athlete. You love baseball. He thinks you should go try the uh, the Betts Fantasy Camp when you when you get to retire. <laughs> you know, man, that, that sounds so good. So <laughs> good. I'll come with you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, Stay safe, guys. Well done. Thank yes, you. Thank we'll talk you. to you soon. Stay happy. Bye-bye. Uh, he really is a rock star. He is. He's uh, great. And, and and I really mean what I say. He really has done a lot. And, and he's put him. He puts himself out there yeah. to be criticized too. And and to, and fair. He knows that. He yeah. talks about it. He, yeah. he he realizes that. And so Jim, really, thank you for what you have done. And his, his time certainly not up. We didn't even talk about pizza. He's I know. Imagine all that. that we didn't talk about. We're gonna have him back. Uh, oh, I'm gonna send him a text and tell him. Uh, but, but by the way, we we're supposed to talk a little bit about <laughs> pizza, pizza too. Pizza. Uh, Hey, uh, so yesterday, speaking of uh, baseball, yesterday uh, we had Will Smith uh, yes. from the Staten Island Yankees. And after he left, he sent us a photo. Uh, He's not teasing us with the, the hot seltzer, is he? No, 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 no. That, he wouldn't be, but uh, that's coming, actually, at some oh, point. Okay. Uh, no, Jimmy Kimmel went out and did this search for oh, yes, he was on all the, the Will Smiths yes. that were out there. Yes. And so he tied, he titles this when he, when Will Smith, when... Will Smith got to meet him. Not yeah, the other way around. Not the other way around. <laughs> uh, they had a segment about people named Will Smith, and uh, so he had the opportunity to go check yes. it out. So we and shared that with us. to make his situation even a little more strange, his wife's name is Jada. Yeah. So, I mean, that that's they are the other a whole other level. Jada and Will, Will, Smith. Will Smith. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that's cool. That's a whole other level. Hey, uh, in the theme of Staten Island... I've got our meme of the day, Naz. You ready for this? I'm ready. Uh, from amazing. comedian Vic DiBattetto. I love Vic. So <laughs> you need a guy, I know a guy. <laughs> <laughs> I got a guy. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> we take, I that guy true. bowls on Wednesday. <laughs> 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 they were full of them. The place is full of them. Everybody, uh, everybody's got a guy. We're, we're, we're oh. so Actually, full I of asked them. you the other day. About something, and you said, "I said you got a guy." You're like, "I got a guy." I got a guy. <laughs> uh, got and a then, guy. and then sometimes we got a guy. Yeah, no, I got a guy, but no, not no, no. I'm not recommending that guy. <laughs> <laughs> not that guy. Oh, <laughs> uh, thank you for the kind words there, Ronnie. Yes, and thank uh, you, Ron. and and Ray uh, Brian says uh, you look great. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> very nice, very nice. <laughs> I made sure I didn't stand under a light. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, you know, when we move the set again, we have to be conscious yeah. of where the and lights to are. to not be under a vent also. Well, yes, yeah, so tomorrow, when we, we are moving tomorrow. <laughs> as Jimmy and Jimmy and Michael want to work uh, this way, uh, we're going to move that way. So we'll away from a vent and away from a light for Ray's head when he joins us. Uh, so, you know, this 
certain things happening around here. Jimmy, Jimmy's really getting to do some maintenance that he hasn't been able to do, yeah. as he's talked about. Well, I can't imagine him ever being able to do what he's doing right now. No. Oh no! And what he's doing now has been bugging him forever. Uh, you know, it's just when th when these lanes were put in, they took out some wood underneath, right. and right. so you know the gutters were crooked to an extent, and the foul light. Right. I mean, Everything, it, and look, nothing look, 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 that you it's couldn't been, see. It's been new. It's it's my nothing you'd stuff. see, nothing right. that would affect anything. Right. But Jimmy. But Jimmy and his concern are long term. term so right. long term, right. if that wood just gets weaker, right. so he created this project because he knew it had to be done. So he's doing. I mean, he's doing a great job uh, with everything that he does. We're uh, so lucky to have one him. of the one of the projects that he did, took on yesterday. Uh, we introduced a, a new t person, to, a new um, member of the Rabs team. Um, so for those of us who don't like to touch doors, uh, in general, my thing is more about bathroom doors. Uh, but we well yeah because people don't watch we've introduced hands. the uh, the step and pull so these are on all the doors uh, that you have awesome. to pull open you could pull open with your foot now check that out it's good it's probably a good leg workout too it is definitely a good <laughs> work like you had to see us testing them out yesterday I even put a pair of bowling shoes on to test them to out see if it would work with the well bowling. not even that I, I was concerned about maybe rubbing Scratching and the so they're pretty these are pretty good they're made well as long as I mean they're not meant to be to hang on right to open right. the door but you right. can take it and open the door open and, the door and Scurry through. Yeah, the only door you can't use it on is the Highland Boulevard door because you got to step up into <laughs> oh, the yeah, door. Oh yeah, that's right. How you get it? So it's not going to work on that yeah. one. Uh, but Jimmy was putting those in. Uh, some signage we're working on and getting ready for. Uh, I mean, cleaning and getting ready um, for when we do get to open. Melanie, we don't know when that's going to be. Uh, quite honestly, if you you know the same information uh, that we know. know. So whatever you see um, out there. Uh, is the same information we have. We don't have inside information, which we which we had. Uh, Jimmy talked a little bit about the fact that phase one, some point in June. Yep. So, and he's, and I mean, we should be confident. There's been some great things that to his, what he just shared with us. So uh, we're in phase four, which then looks like j late July, uh, maybe August oh, one. I, maybe. It really yep. depends uh, on what, when we could get phase one started. So uh, we'll be here. I did not drink. So funny. Uh, Kevin, see, you guys notice a lot of things. Uh -huh. I have, I do enjoy, um, I could drink one of these. I can't drink more than one. I, I do like the pale ale better. Yeah, um, I'm not a Pilsner fan. I'm pretty sure we went to the bowl game and Kevin didn't like the the, the <laughs> Pilsner. Uh, but I, I had a can of it and I brought it out because uh, oh, I didn't have it yesterday, which we should have when we had the Staten Island uh, uh, Yankee oh, Yankee guys on. Um, so anyway, but yeah, that, uh, I, I could drink one of them. And that's about it. Uh, but that's my personal preference. Uh, I hope everyone is wearing bowling shoes hanging out on the approach. Rob, we're breaking a lot of rules here. We've got liquids. Yes. <laughs> uh, we've got no bowling shoes yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've got all this stuff on the Step approaches. Stepping past the foul line. Stepping past the foul yeah, line. Yeah, a lot of it, stuff going on. <laughs> but that's uh, all right because when we welcome everybody back, it's all going to be good. Yeah. We're excited. Be we'll be excited. I don't have any coffee, though. It's not, it's not <laughs> you, 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 yeah, listen, you have plenty of access to coffee, Ray. I mean, it's never uh, – and, John, we look forward to seeing you when you do come up. Uh, hey, you know, we've, we're enjoying uh, coming to you live every day, and we hope that you are, too. You've been tuning in. So, really, thank you for the support. Continue to like and share. And yeah. Tell your friends. If you haven't watched our past episodes, uh, be sure to go back and check them out. We've had some awesome interviews, as you guys have shared. Um, yeah, have, and have we've shared. been really, really blessed with the people that mm -hmm. we've been lucky enough to interview. And yeah. uh, everybody has been so gracious and uh, open, and it was great. We we haven't we haven't had a stinker. I hope I'm not jinxing us. We haven't had a bad one yet. Everyone's been... Great. Yeah, everybody has been. And so, you know, uh, Patricia, you asked a, a good question. Um, how are uh, bowling alleys and centers across the country dealing with social distancing? I mean, this is, uh, we've, Naz and I have been pretty consistent and we have a leg up here. We're going to be of the last to be able to open, especially being here in New York City. So we're going to learn all the things that our friends are doing Thank great you. and bad. And uh, yeah, we're going to, we're going to have that opportunity. And so we've got some thoughts in place and what we'll do. Uh, there are bowling centers that are operating every other pair. Right. There are some bowling centers that don't have to do anything, but they're doing it anyway, right. uh, depending on your local municipalities. So, uh, but they're, most of them are just operating with every other pair, or every other lane, and then alternating that for the next session. Right. Right. Um, and taking time to clean in between. I've seen, yeah. unfortunately it did seem when I was reading through some of the center posts that some of them are not really, no, they're kind of quiet. 
So, um, you know, we don't know if that's a reflection on maybe they're opening sooner than really the entire country. So people aren't quite comfortable with that yet. But yeah. again, I think that that's going to be to our advantage because by the time we do open, we're going to be truly kind of past a lot of the uncertainty. Right. So people will feel comfortable coming back, which I think they should. I mean, I, I think that it's going to work to our advantage, honestly. Oh, so I, 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 <laughs> uh, Kevin, I'm going to share that video tomorrow. I'm, I'm going to wait. That's a good one. I did see that. Uh, that could be tomorrow's meme. Hey, Renee, if you're still watching, uh, as you waved, uh, we're gonna we're gonna get I'm gonna reach out to you. We're gonna get you on. Renee, a uh, yaymaker, she was scheduled to come and do a, an art class here uh, on oh, site. So we got to get yeah. Renee in and talk about what she's doing. And she's taking her business and they're virtual, doing it virtually. Oh, a friend of mine did she paint did nights painted, and uh, she and did stuff. So paint in the after like four o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. And uh, yes, she loved it. So, uh, Renee, expect a uh, yeah, that would be great. Call. Um, and yeah, and so to your point, some of our proprietor friends aren't as busy. Some I have, I'm hearing both sides, extreme sides, right. nobody in between. Either they're extremely busy and they don't know how to handle it, mm -hmm. even in their limited hours, but then the majority have haven't gotten true acceptance of coming, right? So, right? Well, you know what? Listen, this this way, listen. We, 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 Frankie and I are, we're on it. Don't worry. Yeah. Uh, Dennis. Yes. Yeah. John just keeps rubbing in living in the great state of Florida where he golfed where and he's, he's bowled golfing, yesterday. He's and then he's, and then he's coming here this week. John, I don't even know why you're coming home to New York. You have all you need there in Florida right now. Yeah. Well, you, you can't do any of that here. And somebody did ask, uh, one of the questions we didn't get to to ask Jimmy, uh, was about, were about the golf courses. And I apologize because I just recalled it as it, as it tipped away. Yeah. Um, he's a, if you go to his Facebook page, he's he been addressing a lot of that. Yes. Yeah. So, um, go check out his videos. He's been out there very vocal every day, not ranting no. like old you Jimmy know what? He's good. I mean, he, he, he'll answer any question that's composed, yes. you know, that's put to him. He's very, he's great. He's a great communicator too. I mean, he's, like you said, he loves words and, um, you know, I love, I could listen to him all day. Yeah, and he, he's got the gift of gab. He definitely is gabby. <laughs> um, so. so the rest of this week is shaped up nicely. We're going to talk food on Thursday with Pam Silvestri. Yes. Uh, Pro Bowl is Saturday with Shannon O'Keefe. Shannon O'Keefe. Future Hall of Famer. She uh, is that. The one and only Mike Pellegrino Sr. joins us this week. Wow. <laughs> wow. So we're, we're, we're going to we get a lot a lot happening here oh, on Live from Rabs. I can't wait to talk. Uh, Episode 58 today, Naz. Can you imagine? We're going to hit the big 6-0. Six, 6-0. Zero. Six, zero. Just in two days. Like, it's so, f our birthday just comes so fast. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. We we zipped right past yours. Yeah. Oh, mine. We doubled, almost doubled mine. Yep. We're catching up, catching up to you. We're catching up to mine. And, you know, we're here until further notice. Uh, every day, 2 p.m. Uh, we really, again, uh, we appreciate you guys tuning in every day with us. Uh, and if if you really haven't gone back, you go back and, and we had some Watch this some week alone. Episode, we had some great yeah. interviews, and you know what? I, we didn't even talk Mets with with Jimmy Otto. See, we, we so have. many more, so many more yeah. things we could have talked about. We could have had him back. We're gonna have to have him back on. Um, he seems like he enjoyed it. So. He's a great guy. He really is a great guy. He's a good. He's a good guy. He's a good chap. So uh, John I think plans to. Uh, oh God, Brian. <laughs> uh, John says he's going to stop in on Sunday. Let's let's see where Sunday takes us. Yeah, uh, but, but not yeah. a, he can sit in the parking lot. <laughs> I don't want anybody in the building, especially in Florida. Oh Florida. my God! They're well, just willy nilly opening up businesses. You know what, Naz? Yeah, we kept it real. We did. We did. With Jimmy Otto, we kept it real. Well, it's hard not to keep real with him. He's he's really really real. Oh, and happy anniversary to forty seventh anniversary to, to Ronnie. What is that? Oh, happy anniversary! And today is also my daughter's anniversary. Oh, happy, happy anniversary! Happy anniversary! Happy anniversary! Yes. yes. Oh. So uh oh. Oh whoa 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 whoa! whoa. Got, did that just come? Wait, we come wait. on come on down. We might have breaking news. We do have breaking news. Our production. Hey, I bought several cases to sell. I mean, you know, we can only drink some of it. Our producer. I gotta make. Is, we gotta try to make some money around here. Well, we, sell a case to a 
We just got a delivery from Union Beer. And you know what that means? The only beer delivery that I, we've accepted, uh, we just got our hands on the uh, flagship hard seltzer. Naz, I don't know if it's cold or not. You want to try it's it out? It's not going to matter. Come on. <laughs> Look at this live taste test. Breaking news live on the air. Naz, creamsicle, watermelon, or. Um, oh, come on, creamsicle. Lemon ice. Oh, uh, creamsicle Ooh. or watermelon? I'll try, I'll try the creamsicle. I like, uh, you know what? I like the, the labels. Liz, what do you want? Nice. We'll do watermelon. I'll do the lemon ice. Oh, check this out. We're gonna share. Breaking news, right. live on air. Wait, wait, wait. Ready? I wasn't ready. I had to put it in the microphone. Oh, oh boy. Cheers. If we don't like it, you can't say it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's delicious. Best I ever tasted. Oh, that is really good. So this is the uh, flagship. Ralph's Ice's Hard Seltzer. There are three flavors, watermelon, creamsicle, and lemon ice. It was available on Flagship's website for delivery. They sold out within an hour. And um, we uh, we had the guys on the show prior to May 1st. Jacqueline, uh, we love this. This is really good. And uh, so Jay and Matt were on the show prior to May 1st when they thought they would get it launched. They launched it May 15th, um, an hour, an hour it was gone. So the only way you can get it now is through a, a bar restaurant that, that has ordered it through their distributor. So I have to say thank you to our friends at Union Beer for making that possible that we can get our hands on some of these. That is, I have to say, this is an awesome, yeah. two Staten Island institutions come together to make a, a great product. I'm excited. I'm, I can't wait to try the other ones. So uh, I got to do some inventory, but it looks like uh, we'll be able to send uh, sell some of these uh, with your pizza on, on an order. So yes. And so for those that were asking, pizzas. we do have some Jello shots that we could send out. Yes, I did take um, some yesterday. I left some for the regular people, for other people. Kevin, uh, maybe I'll bring some home for you. Maybe I'll be nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not known to be nice all the time. Well, thank you, Liz and Tina. Uh, well, Tina's gonna have to get a taste of this. I think Liz she... just took it over to her. Oh, she did. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I can't wait to try the other flavors. Yeah. And if you look at the photos, they they took the big things of ice yeah. and made that part of the process, and yeah. they talked about it. So, congratulations to Flagship and and Ralph. Yeah, that's delicious. This um, is gonna be a hit this summer. We're looking forward to adding this to the regular lineup here in. Uh, Rabs High Rollers Lounge. We're serving that at uh, uh, Casa de Larson. I have to. I <laughs> God, when when they first started, Truly was one of the first ones that I, that we've had, and I didn't mind the. I really didn't mind the lime one. That was the only one, right. but very faint. Right. Right. Then of course you've got the White Claws that came out, right? Which all I happen to like are the flavors that most people don't like: the mango right. and the grapefruit, right? Um, and the raspberry. And then we sell, it's funny because they come in mixed cases and the ones that we sell, then there's all the other and ones. The, yeah, the and then when, the when you say you only have whatever the flavor is, all right, yeah, whatever. We'll take it anyway. Right. Then Super Bowl, right before the Super Bowl, that was when Bud Light launched the Bud Light right. Seltzers. Right. And a totally different flavor, like filled with flavor, not right. sweet, sugary. Right. And I'm going to tell you something. This is, um, it's good. It's kind of, a, it's kind of like an in between. It's yeah, not, it's not sweet. super sweet, which, I, which I like it because, I don't write like super sweet stuff, but oh, it's good. It's good. Yeah. I'm like sure it. over ice or nice and cold. That's be what Liz just said. Yeah. Or nice and cold, it's gonna what about be. putting this, taking the, getting the ice and just putting this right over the ice? Interesting. Interesting. That's good stuff. Well, uh, we're excited. So, uh, water up your pizzas. Tina, and did, did Tina, did you try it yet? You should try it. So your mic's lemonade. Uh, so Gennaro's is open Tuesday through Saturday. Give us give us a call. Place your order, 718-351-0192. Get in on that. And uh, if you ask about the – about sell, we don't have any beer left. All the beer is gone <laughs> and bad. Uh, so no beer. But we do have some hard seltzers. Uh, yeah, get when in I do some inventory, uh, you ask about it. And you can also ask for uh, – some jello shots. And if you order it, take a picture and share it with us. Yeah. We want to see you enjoying this. We certainly do. Uh, we're excited. I'm excited to take some home tonight. You know, yeah. this, I don't think it's going to replace drinking the wine, but at least I'll have one. Something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, hey, we kept it real. And Nez, we just, real. we had a great interview. We, and then breaking. And breaking news. <laughs>
and, and now we get to drink some alcohol. Thank God we're drinking it now and not the beginning of the show because you, we might have seen Nazareth on the floor this time. Uh, no, you always say that, but I'm fine. Being I will leave here and go home and take a nap. But <laughs> I won't yeah. fall out on the floor. It just makes me tired. Makes I, me tired. I know. It's good. It's not a bad thing. It makes me sleepy. We don't judge here. Hey, you know what, Naz? Uh, come and see us tomorrow here. Yay. Live from Raps, join 2 p.m. Us. Don't forget to join us and tune in the rest until further notice. <laughs> but, but Naz. That was awesome. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.